What's good? What's good? Today, I would like to discuss something directly connected to one of my earlier videos, healing ancestral and generational trauma. And that is of the fatherlessness epidemic we are experiencing as a culture. I believe the nuclear family is an integral layer of our social fabric. It is not the only layer as we as individuals must maintain self responsibility and accountability, but that accountability and responsibility is taught by our family structures at a young age. And so if you're not taught values from your family, you're not going to take those values into the broader community. Or if you're taught poor or bad values, you're going to take those bad values out into the greater community, which is what I believe is a big problem we're dealing with today. And I don't mean to disparage single parents when I make this video. Heck, I am a, I'm a single dog dad, and that's hard enough as it is. I could not imagine being a single parent. I'm very fortunate to have not had kids yet in my life because I know I'm not ready. I need to continue working on my physical, mental, and spiritual health before I undergo that commitment. Having a child is a commitment that should be undertaken with reverence, with seriousness, with intention and love. And that is not how our current population is procreating. I would like to, I'm going to share a screen, but I want to mention that fatherlessness is not just fathers not living at home, but it is also fathers who are not present at home. So I'll speak from personal experience. My mother had multiple boyfriends and husbands, and uh, I never, I've never met my biological father. And in fact, when I was 11, my mother abandoned myself and my siblings in an attempt to salvage her second marriage to an abusive man. She then never really recovered. And as a teenager, I was informally adopted by a family member and within that family structure the father figure would go to work come home and play video games he was not present for the development of the family and so fatherlessness can manifest in a variety of ways and it is important that we that we address this topic culturally now I'm going to share some data, some facts about fatherlessness, and I'll leave this link in the description so you can follow up and fact check if you want. But some fathering advocates would say that almost every social ill faced by America's children is related to fatherlessness. I don't agree with that, but I will say a lot of them are. As supported by the data below, children from fatherless homes are more likely to be poor, become involved in drug and alcohol abuse, drop out of school, and suffer from health and emotional problems. Boys are more likely to become involved in crime, and girls are more likely to become pregnant as teens. So discussing generational and ancestral trauma, if we don't nip the problem at the bud, it's going to continue to grow. Poverty. Children in father-absent homes are almost four times more likely to be, to be poor. In 2011, 12% of children in married couple families were living in poverty, compared to 44% of children in mother-only families. Children living in female-headed house, female-headed families with no spouse present had poverty rate of 
over four times the rate in married couple families. Drug and alcohol abuse. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services states fatherless children are at a dramatically greater risk of drug and alcohol abuse. And I'll speak candidly for a minute that I never really liked alcohol, but around age 26 or 27, when a whole lot of life just kind of came crashing down on me, I did start smoking pot. And uh, it was not until recently that I really looked at my cannabis habit and began to think maybe I should cut back. I do want to have a family myself someday, and so I'm trying to build my physical, mental, and spiritual health so I can then commit to that endeavor. Having children should be looked at as a a revered opportunity. It is a commitment, and we are not consciously procreating as a population right now. There is significantly more drug use among children who do not live with their mother and father. Physical and emotional health. A study of 1,977 children age 3 and older living with a residential father or father figure found that children living with married biological parents had significantly fewer externalizing and internalizing behavioral problems than children living with at least one non-biological parent. This stat really kind of startled me. Children of single-parent homes are more than twice as likely to commit suicide. Data from Three Waves of Fragile Families study was used to examine the prevalence and effects of mothers' relationship changes between birth and age three on their children's well-being. Children born to single mothers show higher levels of aggressive behavior than children born to married mothers. Living in a single mother household is equivalent to experiencing 5.25 partnership transitions. And so it just blows my mind that there is this Marxist movement to eradicate the nuclear family when the data clearly shows that it is important. And if you think just logically for a second, of course the family is important. Now we can argue about biological parents versus step parents, and that's a whole different thing. But what really matters is just having loving and present parents. Educational achievement. Children in grades seven through 12 who have lived with at least one biological parent, youth that experienced divorce, separation, or non-union birth reported lower grade point averages than those who have always lived with both biological parents. Children living with their married biological father tested at a significantly higher level than those living with a non-biological father. I don't care if you have a loving stepfather. I believe that is just as important. Father involvement in schools is, is associated with the higher likelihood of a student getting mostly A's. This was true for fathers in biological parent families, for stepfathers, and for fathers heading single parent families. So again, it's just that involvement component. 71% of high school dropouts are fatherless. Fatherless children have more trouble academically, scoring poorly on tests of reading, mathematics, and thinking skills. Children from father absent homes are more likely to be truant from school, more likely to be excluded from school, more likely to leave school at age 16, and less likely to attain academic and professional qualifications in adulthood. Crime. Adolescents living in intact families are less likely to engage in delinquency than their peers living in non-intact families. Compared to peers in intact families, Adolescents in single-parent families and step-families were more likely to engage in delinquency. This relationship appeared to be operating through differences in family processes, parental involvement, supervision, monitoring, and parent-child closeness, 
between intact and non-intact families. A study using data from the National Longitudinal Society of Ad Adolescent Health explored the relationship between family structure and risk of violent acts in neighborhoods. The results revealed that if the number of fathers is low in a neighborhood, then there is an increase in acts of teen violence. The statistical data showed that a 1% increase in the proportion of single parent families in a neighborhood is associated with a 3% increase in adolescents' level of violence. In other words, adolescents who live in neighborhoods with lower proportions of single parent families and who report higher levels of family integration commit less violence. Children aged 10 to 7 living with two biological or adoptive parents were significantly less likely to experience sexual assault, child maltreatment, other types of major violence, and non-victimization type of adversity, and were less likely to witness violence in their families compared to peers living in single parent families and step families. A study of 109 juvenile offenders indicated that the family structure significantly predicts delinquency. Sexual activity and teen pregnancy. A study using a sample of 1,409 rural southern adolescents, 851 females and 558 males, aged 11 to 18 years, investigated the correlation between father absence and self-reported sexual activity. The results revealed that the adolescents in father absence homes were more likely to report being sexually active compared to adolescents living with their fathers. Being raised by a single mother raises the risk of teen pregnancy. Marrying with less than a high school degree and forming a marriage where both partners have less than a high school degree. And so none of this is designed to attack single parents, but it is entirely designed to raise awareness to the importance of family. The family layer is the layer just beneath the community layer. And so if you want to do the best thing you can for your community, do the best thing you can for your family. It just, it really, it, it blows my mind that this is being argued and that there literally are people trying to eradicate the nuclear family. I'm, I'm far from a square. I, I am very much open to the human experience being free, but freedom comes with responsibility. As Viktor Frankl said, the Statue of Liberty should be accompanied on the West Coast by a Statue of Responsibility. If you want to live a free life, don't have children. It's that simple. With Planned Parenthood being well-funded, contraceptives are not hard to get. Not at all. Not at all. There are very few excuses for having children out of wedlock beyond the fact that it is a generational trauma pattern. And it is one that we need to break. And it is on us to do so. And so if you're watching this and happen to be a single parent, please don't feel attacked. I'm not trying to attack you. And if you're watching this and you don't have children yet, please understand that it is a huge 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 commitment that should not be taken lightly thank you very much for listening as always much love